the GOM ATOS Q represents the absolute gold standard for accuracy, precision, and resolution in 3D scanning and QA metrology. Today, we're going to take a look at how it works with a basic setup. So I've got the ATOS Q set up on a carbon fiber tripod. When you purchase the system, the scanning head can be bought with either an 8M or 12M configuration. So that means either 8 million points of measurement per shot or 12 million points of measurement per shot. I also have chosen the 350 MV measuring volume. That means I'm going to have a field of view of about 350 millimeters. Now, if I wanted to do larger or smaller parts, I can swap out the lenses on the two cameras on the outside and the projector in the middle to a different measuring volume. They come in 100 millimeter, 170, 270, 350, and 500 millimeter MVs. So I can take those 8 or 12 million points of measurement and either squeeze or stretch them over different fields of view to get more detail, more smaller details on a smaller part, or still very good detail, but not as much spread across a much larger part. So I've got the mobile controller here housing all of my electronic ins and outs. Everything that needs to be plugged together fits inside of this, including a power strip so that I have one power cable that goes to a wall outlet. When it closes down, it also key, can house the laptop for transport. Finally, I've got the GOMROT 350 rotation table. This is a motorized rotation table that plugs into the computer so that I can instruct the software to take multiple positions of the same part without me having to interact with it. Now I've got these measuring targets, these scanning targets on both the rotation table and my part so that as things move around, the software knows how to translate each uh, measurement so that they all match up in space. I've placed the, the targets mostly around the outside perimeter of the part where they're going to be captured equally in both positions that I plan to put the part in. So I'm going to place this down on the turntable and I'm going to bring the tripod over to center up on the part. Now initially on the right side of the screen you see that it's telling me that I'm too close. I also have two laser pointers on the uh, scanning head that come in at angles so that when they are together on the part, I know that I'm at the optimal distance. This is going to be pretty good for right now. And I'll want to center it up. On the screen, I see that it's picking up the targets as green dots. Or I also see a preview of what one of the cameras sees with crosshairs showing me each of the targets. The scanner is automatically adjusting the exposure time to the surface finish of the part. I'm going to tell it in the workflow assistant that I want to scan a single part, and then I'm going to be scanning with the rotation table. It asks me for the ambient temperature in the room, and it's going to begin by taking the first position and pausing to check with me and see if it's getting the right stuff. So let's take a look at what we get with our first measurement. This looks pretty good, and it's showing in red the system's best guess of what I'm going to want to delete from this data set. And in this case, it is getting uh, the correct level on that. It's taking away everything from the turntable and below. If it didn't, I could adjust this manually. But I'm going to go ahead and accept it, and it's going to start taking the remainder of these positions. Again, using the alignment of the targets to translate and transform each of these objects in space so that they all match up to each other. And as if I move the part around, you can see that with each new position, it's getting line of sight to surfaces that it didn't have previously and adding them to the total. I'm going to have this first measuring series. I've told it to take 13 positions on the turntable. But depending on the complexity of the part, I could do more or less. So we're just waiting here for it to finish up. And once it's finished taking all 13, it's going to run a further optimization on the entire group of uh, measurements 
to see if it can uh, optimize the accuracy as much as possible. Let's see how it goes. All right, that looks great. Now what I need is the other side of the part that's missing. So I'm going to tell the software that I want to scan a second side. I'm going to grab this part and flip it over on the turntable and repeat the process exactly as before. Again, the first scan it takes, it's going to pause and check with me if, I, if it's getting the right area and trying to delete away what I want it to. This is good, and this is also a good way to check to see if the part is fitting neatly inside the measuring volume. And now we start to rotate. We should mention that we've adjusted the exposure time to the surface finish of this part. Now, of course, it's not going to be possible to directly measure either clear or highly reflective surfaces, something with a chromed finish or glass or clear plastic, I would need to apply a powder coating onto it to be able to capture it. But it can adjust the exposure times to capture fairly shiny objects. And it can even be asked to take multiple different exposures with different exposure times so that I can have an assembly with multiple parts in it with different surface finishes. They can all be put simultaneously onto the turntable and captured all at once. So the second measuring series has completed. It's looking pretty good. And as soon as the software is ready, I can tell it that I want to transform this new measuring series onto the first. It does so fairly automatically based on the targets. And if it couldn't, if it wasn't uh, working out which targets I want to use and which I don't, then I could go in manually and select them one by one. The software is also capable of doing an alignment by best fit of the geometry, but the targets are the most accurate. We should also say that if I were doing a project where all I needed was one side of an object, I could scan it using only the targets on the turntable, not having to put any on the part itself. Now the only thing left to do is tell it to finish scanning and polygonize. What this means is up till this point, We've been taking point cloud data. The software has been, or I should say the hardware and the software have been capturing a cloud of individual XYZ measurements in space that all come together to appear good on the screen, but they don't constitute a solid object. Meshing is converting that into an object made up of small, flat, triangular surfaces, many, many, many of them to potentially make a watertight solid if we were able to capture everything, or at least to give us something that we can bring into the CAD system and use. So this now being finished, I'm going to take a look at the mesh quality. It looks very, very good. I'm very happy with this. And I've got very accurate full coverage of as much of the part as I could reasonably hope to with this quick of a scan. At this point, I could import the CAD model into GOM Inspect and run a comparison to check for QA purposes. Or if I didn't have a CAD model, this might be the point where I would want to export to a reverse engineering software to create a CAD model. And finally, here's a quick look at what you can expect from some of the other measuring volumes. As stated earlier, the measuring volumes can be changed by swapping out the lenses on the front of the scanner for both the cameras and the projector. And then by running a quick calibration process, this gives us incredible versatility on this system to scan objects of very different sizes and scaling the resolution and accuracy up and down to match.